Mike, uh, something that um, your first team coach Chris said on his interview on Monday about his psychological background, um, he likes to talk to players away from the pitch, um, not necessarily just about their training, but about, I suppose, everything and the all-encompassing nature of football and with mental health being so important. How big a factor is it to, uh, for you to, to have somebody like that in your coaching staff who can take players to the side and, and, and work on the mental side of the game? Um, well, I don't think you can underestimate that side of it. I think that's life. Mm. Um, obviously, we talk about attitude, mentality. Um, that is mental health. That is the way you see the game, the where where they see uh, the, they are at the minute, and where they want to get to. How they're going to get there? It's step by step. It's it's a process as for us individuals and collectively as a, as a club, the direction we want to go, um, and it's really brutal. And it can be, you can feel lost. And um, like last night, you, we can suffer. We can suffer as a group. We can, as a club, um, individually. So you need the understanding, the outlets. You need to be able to talk to people, and you need to be able to try and navigate through. Because, like I say, I think even as adults, as forty years old sitting here, you get lost um, in things, and especially in this industry with external criticism and pressures from within yourself um, and external pressures is it can be really really hard place to navigate um, so yeah it's huge and for us we want to come in here and we want everyone to come in every day and enjoy it we know that's not reality we're not going to enjoy every day we, we didn't enjoy yesterday but in a perverse way you've got to find a bit of um, enjoyment in the pain because if you don't and it's going to be a long career. Mm. Um, I, I suppose in, in football it's kind of a taboo subject a little bit still, isn't it? You know, having players who, you know, oh, they're on so much money, they're, they're this, that and the other, they should be having a great time, but it doesn't always work like that, does it? No, no I think uh, we're, uh, I mean, I think the word is hedonistic adaptation, as in as human beings, we come accustomed to what we're, uh, what we've got and then it becomes you know it doesn't become exciting the novelty wears off <coughs> so whether that be financial um, the club you go to um, you've got to keep that vision you've got to keep that understanding of what we're doing here um, why we come in and we work so hard every single day um, and yeah like I say as players as young uh, adults um, athletes I think the the standard is they're paid so well they should just get on with it but they're not mechanical, um, you know, machines. Um, as much as we try and explain the, the habitual nature of football every day, coming in, giving it your best, leaving it all out there, um, those kind of understandings, um, we're emotional beings and it can be difficult. So, yeah, it's really important, that side. Is it something you say to the players, OK, you need to go and have a, an hour with him, or is it something that Chris sets up, or, you know, do you just pick up on those sorts of things? Or is it not even not even that formal? Not even that. It, it's really informal. Um, like I say, it's uh, for, for him, you know, to, to be around it's you know he, he adds value on so many different areas of it um, but ultimately we're all, all trying to work in the same direction and and really again it's for the players to um, seek him out and if they want to pull him and have conversations with him like with myself and, uh, and bust in terms of on the field there's tactical technical uh, physical you know emotional um, the psychological there's all these different elements and it, it all has to come together to really um, create the success we're looking for um, you've now bedded yourselves in over the last few weeks with, in terms of training sessions it feels like we're talking about training sessions more than we're talking about games um, a, a lot recently but you know we're now heading into the Christmas period there's going to be a lot of games coming thick and fast Yes, yeah. Um, so a lot of tests. It's Saturday. It's, I think it's going to be our biggest. I think um, obviously, you know, I'm a <coughs> big fan of the manager in terms of I've had a lot of good things about him. He's experienced. He's got a very good team, um, and yeah, that'll be first of many. So yeah, for us, we're obviously still learning, you know, about the the group, and we're we're forging what we believe is the um, our strongest kind of team and squad and we're trying to add as much as we can in terms of that detail but yeah we're going to become coming into a very testing period which we're looking forward to um i think do i mean you're there it's probably going to be a bit of a barometer for, for your side isn't it saturday given that mansfield are a, a team that's at the, the sharper end of the, of the division mm -hmm. and a team who doms would have thought certainly at the start of the season that they'd have been competing against yeah yeah well they uh, the last few years they have been and um like i say they've got um 
some you know, strength and depth in their squad. They've got experience, obviously, uh, Aidan Flint and Kilo Dunn and Lewis Aitkins and people like you know Quinn that can hurt, score goals um, all over the pitch. I think Tranmere, I think they had 70 odd percent possession as well. So they show that, that they can mix it up. Um, they they can play. They, they've got a lot of um, strength in in their, the way they want to play, um, and it can hurt you in any moment of the game. So yeah, like you say, it'll be a good good uh, measurement for us. But again, we just focus on what we want to do, how we want to go there, and how we want to conduct ourselves, how we want to play, um, and how we can hurt them. And I suppose with the the, the first team has kept pretty much fresh last night. That you, you're going in relatively injury free. Uh, yeah, well, obviously we'll dust ourselves down and see if there's anything from from last night. See uh, if Le- Lex has uh, come through, okay. Um, but yeah, like I say, it was a mix. It's you know, it's not the first team and another team. It's, it's that blend, and we're learning, and we want to give as much opportunity as we can for the lads to show what they're about. Um, so yeah, well, obviously I think there'll be uh, lads coming in and um, a bit battered and bruised. Uh, you know, our egos as much as, as physically. But um, we're looking forward to yeah. Like I say, we'll be relatively fresh, and uh, we've had a good week's training. Um, do you feel like I mean it's certainly looking like it that the, the players are understanding more of, of what you're asking of them, and I suppose obviously the, the few weeks of training that you've had, you can now start to see it as well. Are you are you finding that every day now they are picking up more and more and more and looking more and more like the side you want them to be? Yeah, yeah, I feel as though the. The unconscious habits that will be starting to creep in, um, and you can see when we're training, you know, they just lads are starting to pick up and do things naturally. Um, again, it's, it's going to be a process um, um, on the field in terms of always looking to tweak, and you know, I don't think it's ever end, it ever ends, does it? Um, but yeah, like I say, the amount of time we've had, I've, we feel as though we can see the development um, and what we're working towards. And I suppose part of that, seeing seeing the rewards of what. Of what um, you've been working on. You've been nominated for Manager of the Month, and that's sort of, that's, that's a sign, isn't it? That the team's going in the right direction, and, and you know you must be, you must be delighted given that it's your first full month in charge. Uh, yeah, I mean, for me, it's uh, I've I've said before that I feel as though the. The emphasis of the the good results has been the nature of the boys. Mm. I think that we haven't had time to to put too much detail in. So this that's just a reflection of of how well the lads have done. Um, and hopefully we can just we're, we're here to try and support and help um, as much as we can. Um, and like I say, I'm more more focused on I was just uh, improving that process and moving forward. Um, and as I understand it, the, the players will be going, or some of the players will be going off to the, the hospital later to give out Christmas mm-hmm. presents and to, to visit some of the, the, the children on the on the ward. There, it's, it's a big it's a big occasion, isn't it? And, and obviously, with with it being Christmas and a, a difficult time of year, it's it's important that the club is 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 doing those sorts of things. Hugely important, yeah. Um, it's a community club, and um, like I say, I think <laughs> from my experience. Um, it probably helps the players um, just as much, if not more, than it does the the kids we'll be seeing. Um, puts perspective on where we're at. Um, obviously, from last night, it, everyone feels that it's, it's doom and gloom, and it's a difficult evening. But you know, really, let's you know look at things in context. And if we can put a couple of smiles on on people's faces, that's that's what we're here for, and that's the nature of uh, the industry. It's um, it's entertainment on one side, but really we want to just give back as much as we can to the community. So yeah, it's hugely important.